Today's episode, we're going to do something a little bit different, and I promised you guys, uh, since I left my day job to do the art of photography full time, that we would be adding some new things, and part of that is we're gonna be doing more shows, and I'm bumping this up to three shows a week. And I think this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge, but it's gonna be a lot of fun, and you guys have seemed to ask for more stuff, and I think this is a great way of doing it. Um, part of the process in doing this is I'm introducing some new show segments, and this is one of those today. And our segment today, I'm gonna call In Post, and one of the things we haven't covered a lot of on this show is post-production. Um, and for various reasons, I think when I was doing one show a week and I was doing this show in my free time, um, I, I felt like, you know, covering history of photography and the whole art side of it was really, for me, the most important thing to do at that time. And now that we're introducing new content, I think doing post-production is really important and it's an important part of that. And I think no matter what you do, whether you shoot film or whether you shoot digital, um, and you know, everybody does some post-production work. And so I'm hoping that this series will address some of those issues and help you guys with a little bit of training and give you guys some ideas for things that you might be able to do on your own. Um, our subject for our inaugural episode here is I want to talk about highlights and shadows. Now, a lot of times, getting the proper exposure in camera is a difficult thing to do and it's a little bit subjective. Um, you can control exposure to you know, enhance a certain type of mood that you're looking for. Um, you can go for very low key photography for a very somber look. You can go for very high key photography for uh, you know, embracing blown out highlights uh, for you know, a completely different kind of look, especially if you want a washed out white background on something. A lot of times you see product images that are done this way. Uh, you see uh, portraiture that's done this way. But in any case, no matter what you're doing, exposure is essential to getting the image correct. And if you're just going for uh, a standard type of exposure where you're looking for a well-balanced photograph, what you're basically dealing with is what we call dynamic range. And dynamic range is pretty simple um, in concept. And basically, if you think of it this way, um, if you're in a very dark room, let's say, it's so dark, the lights are out, there's no windows, and all of a sudden somebody turns on a flashlight or a light bulb and that is very bright. It's a lot brighter than the room in the dark. And so the distance between something that's really bright like that and something that's very dark like that is essentially what we all tie into dynamic range. It's typically measured in what we call stops or f-stops. You find those on the aperture of your lens. And generally speaking, um, in all the formats that you might be shooting on, whether that is film or digital, the formats that are gonna give you the most dynamic range inherently are going to be on the film side of things. And they're going to be black and white film because you can adjust your film and your development time to capture more dynamic range. And then that's followed by color negative film or C41 film, which a lot of the modern films give up to like maybe 14 stops of light if you shoot on it correctly. And, and that's pretty amazing. And you're going to, basically what this means is it gives you more flexibility in post in terms of your shadows and your highlights. And so if you have more information there to work with, in other words, the shadows just don't go fall off to black and the highlights don't get blown out to white, then you have more you can do in post with the, with the exposure, or with the photograph or the image to manipulate that. Now with digital, you have a slightly more limited dynamic range, although each year when new sensors are developed and new cameras are developed, this is starting to change. You also have techniques you can use uh, like HDR photography, which does get abused, but you know, if you use HDR photography correctly, uh, you can increase the dynamic range of your image. Now the problem with this is dynamic or HDR photography requires taking several exposures of the same scene. So this usually means you need a tripod to do this on, you need to have a consistent aperture, um, you know, your focus needs to stay consistent, and that's not always possible, particularly if you're taking more like street photography or some more improvised kind of off the cuff types of things. So what I wanna do is look at what's possible in post-production. And so what we're gonna do is use Adobe Lightroom today, and I wanna show you kind of some of the things you can look at in terms of shadows and highlights and how that all put, gets put together. So come on over with me and let's have a look. So we've got an image here that has some pretty serious issues with dynamic range. Um, in fact, you're probably wondering what this image is supposed to be even because you can see we have such an extreme difference between shadows and highlights on here. And actually what this is, I'll turn the exposure up a little bit and so you can see some of the, the shadows here. Um, I was getting off a train in Brooklyn. Uh, this was when I was in New York recently, uh, going to see a friend of mine's art opening and I was up on the platform and I was just kind of doing some run and gun street photography. And when I got off, I thought it was kind of an image of the sun going down and all that. And so I really wanted to capture that. What's interesting was, and reset this, I actually was set up in manual mode, believe it or not. Um, I 
which is what I prefer to shoot in, but I probably wouldn't choose that um, just doing run and gun stuff. But I had been obviously in the train shooting out the window, so I was already kind of set up for you know the, the daylight. And so when I got off, um, I'm going down, and I'm like all of a sudden kind of a neat image, and I just you know lifted the camera and just just took it. And obviously this was not what I saw, which you know the reason is is your human eye um, has is capable of discerning a lot more stops of dynamic range than a camera is. And unfortunately, when you're in extreme settings, this is what you get. Now, what can we do to rescue this? There's a couple things I want to talk about. Um, first of all, one thing that helps a lot, and it's not, it's going to be still difficult in this image, but you know, you kind of want to try to expose for the highlights. And I was kind of lucky because that's where this exposure is. You can kind of see that up here in the, you can still get a little detail in the clouds and the sky and some separation up there. And that's kind of important because once you lose highlights, once they go off to white, you're kind of done. You can get more out of the shadows than you can highlights. The other thing is whenever possible, you want to shoot raw. And this is really important because a raw image retains more data data and more information about what's going on in those highlights and shadows than a JPEG does. And so if you're ever in a situation like this, you know, just raw is, that, that's one of the nice things about it. The other thing too is, it, this is a digital image, obviously. Um, I could have shot film, C41 film would have given me a little more dynamic range had I had a film camera with me, um, as would black and white, um, where you're gonna have trouble with slide film. Slide film's probably gonna be even worse than this. Um, you're really gonna lose a lot of your dark. So anyway, so what can you do to rescue an image like this? Well, there's a couple things you can do. If you're used to using Lightroom, which is what we're using right here, I'm in the develop window here, and the first set of controls controls that you have offer you, you know, some reprieve from something like this. And you're going to be messing with exposure and highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. So, you know, the obvious thing I can do is I can turn up the exposure, which is what I kind of did a minute ago. And yes, I start to get my detail in the shadows down here. But what you're going to see down here, particularly with the bridge and the clouds, is I lost everything because it moved everything brighter. And so what I don't want to do is I, I want to maintain those highlights, but bring in my shadows. So there's a couple things you could do at this point. You could try to bring down the highlights here, down the highlight window. Which, which sort of works. In fact, they kind of came back there. Um, the other thing I could do is the opposite, keep the exposure the same. Let me reset this. Let's keep the exposure the same, and I'm just going to lighten the shadows. And that kind of works too. It's kind of two ways to get to the same, same ending. Now, what you want to be careful of here is you can start to see when I do too much of this, it starts to wash out my image. And if I really make those shadows bright, I start to get some weird tone mapping problems here. And I say they're problems because you start to see that effect that a lot of guys who shoot HDR, you know, where it kind of starts looking phony. And that doesn't look pleasing to my eye, even though your eye sees more stops of light to see it faked with tone mapping in a photo. Um, it looks very unnatural. So personally, with my taste is I don't like to overdo this. I like to keep the effect fair fairly subtle. And that's not a knock on HDR. I'm just saying that that's not a look I like. Um, and the other thing you can do is if you look at the histogram up here, you can see I brought all my highlights and compressed them. Um, let's reset this once again. You can see that right here in the histogram, inherently, I've got pretty much all shadows and all highlights with not a lot of midtones in this image. So this is, you know, an extreme example. The other thing you can do that's kind of interesting too, is if I come down here, you can deal with the tone curve a little bit. And I like the fact that Adobe Lightroom separates highlights and lights and darks and shadows so they don't totally clip and this helps you a great deal. So if I could take my darks and open them up on here, my shadows even and open them up, it's a lot more subtle effect and I can bring the lights down. So, you know, you can really dial in and get really specific and, and actually see the tone curve as you're working with this. And this gives you, I think, a little bit more control as you're working in here. And in fact, this is starting to, you know, look a little more natural to me. The other thing I would do because this is a sunset and this is really easy to do, particularly with a raw image, is I probably would change my white balance over a little bit and actually make it so the light is a little more gold in here. And I start to get a look that is more of what I would expect to see on C41 film, which I think is interesting. I'd probably bring my contrast up a little bit on there. But anyway, you could play with it and, and kind of keep going on this until you get what you like. The other thing that I would recommend, uh, just as a general tip to people, is when you're dealing with extreme kinds of situations like this, I kind of like to edit my images and then come back to them later. I don't have the time to do that for you right here, obviously, but a lot of times because you can make extreme adjustments on here, just they sometimes are a little too much and you don't notice that when you've kind of been really close to the image for a long time. Uh, like another thing I might do on this, because I kind of wish I had angled the camera a little more to bring out you know, make that a little more severe with, with the point of view here and my focus point and all that. And so these are kinds of things that you might want to kind of sleep on and look at. But anyway, that's basically how you're going to make these adjustments and deal with this in Adobe Lightroom. And I want to thank you guys for watching another episode of The Art of Photography. I'll see you in the next video. Later.